Hey guys, today we're going to compare Apic Designer version 2, the brand new version of the software with, you can say, the industry standard for the Vector Arts Adobe Illustrator. Alright, I will give you like 10 aspects. We will talk about which software is better for which one and at the end, I hope you'll be able to make your own conclusion and pick your own software all right so keep that in mind i will not give you the final score i will just talk about different aspects and how we can use both programs for that stuff and then you must make your own decision based on your workflow all right so let's get started the first thing we need to mention is a pixel persona that's a win for affinity designer that's a special persona built in into the program where we can do some light raster editing. So it's like mini Photoshop inside the vector editing software. And why it's important? Because we can finish the illustration, the artwork within one software. So you start with vectors and then you switch to pixel persona to do some shading, lights and shadows in the raster mode. So that was a huge thing. When the Affinity Designer first launched, that was really big deal because people have to use two programs, right? Adobe Illustrator for vectors and then they add shading and textures in Photoshop. So they need to pay for two expensive programs. And I think designers solve that with this special pixel persona built in into the vector software. So that's a, definitely a win for I think designer. If you need uh, some light raster editing or you like to texture your illustrations, you are not really keen on keeping them vector as vectors you like to add texture and shadows and lights that's something definitely for you pixel persona is in affinity designer and not in illustrator all right and here's the easy win for adobe illustrator auto trace some people like to use it personally i never use this feature but every time we got update for affinity designer there are so many comments that people are waiting for this auto trace. This important part of the workflow, especially nowadays when so many people work from iPads. All right, so we can easily auto trace. So we can turn raster image into vector with just one click. And unfortunately, this option is not available in Affinity Designer version 2 just yet. Let's hope they will add this. But right now, it's really easy win for Adobe Illustrator. This feature is simply missing. All right, the thing number three, our round number three is all about shape building. As you can see, no winner here because both programs are really good at that right now. In the past, when we got only version one of Affinity Designer, Illustrator was a winner. It was much easier to build shapes, modify shapes for like purpose of designing logos or trademarks. But now with the shape builder added to version two, it's exactly the same process. So we got a proper shape builder over here on the left side as you can see and this way we can easily create a new shape using that tool exactly as in Adobe Illustrator all right so this is a very similar process in both programs so there's no a winner here let's move to the next one let's talk about the price that's important so the price for Affinity Designer version 2, that's $70. And for Adobe Illustrator, depends where you are, it's around $250 per year. So you kind of renting the program for one year. And after one year, you pay zero for Affinity Designer because you purchased the license already. But for Illustrator, you must pay again and again. All right. So on the price side, the Affinity Designer is definitely more affordable. It's simply cheaper. So here's our winner, Affinity Designer version two. All right, and the next round goes to Adobe Illustrator. There's a really nice 3D tool. I still remember using Affinity Illust Adobe Illustrator when this tool was kind of introduced, was kind of a new thing, a gimmick. Nobody really used that. But nowadays with this uh, like plastic like very simple 3D icons, it's super handy and you can really use this 3D tool in vector editing software. That's a really great addition. People use it more and more often nowadays and the tool is better and better with every 
upgrades. So that's something that I'm currently wish to have in Adobe Affinity Designer, but it's available in Adobe Illustrator. So that's the win for Adobe here. The 3D tool, the proper 3D tool. All right, the next round, as you can see, no win winner here, both programs are really good in this thing. I'm talking about the iPad version of the software. In the past, that also, this was a win for Affinity Designer, all right? So Affinity Designer had much better uh, mobile version. The mobile version of Designer was exactly the same version, just with a touch input, you could say, right? And then they introduced Adobe Illustrator for iPad. It was not the same program as on desktop. It lacked so many features. So that was really behind. But with age upgrade, they are better and better. And nowadays you can say they are kind of similar, offer multiple tools to work on iPad on the go. So I say that both software, both programs are really, really good on iPad here. Not a clear winner. All right, next one. This was really hard. I think I was a little bit biased on this one. User interface. For me, as I switched to design a few years back already, that's definitely Adobe, uh, sorry, Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer version two, um, mainly because they split this whole process into personas, right? So we got designer persona for vector tools, Pixel persona I mentioned before for raster tools and export persona for just slicing and exporting your design. So I really like how they simplify the whole interface by dividing it into personas. And I think it was really clever. That's why I giving the interface to Affinity Designer, all right? So that's a win for me here. But as I mentioned, I may be a little bit biased on this one. All right, and next thing, that's the win for Adobe Illustrator, unfortunately, they are still the industry standard and sometimes the contracts may specific that they want you to send them AI files or they got some program custom made for the company that can work with AI files. All right, so that will kind of limit your options for the software you can use while working with this certain company. Or sometimes some schools, universities, they are not teaching vector graphics, they are teaching Adobe Illustrator, all right? So keep that in mind, it's still considered as industry standard and sometimes by using other software that's less popular, you may be left behind, all right? So that's still a win for Adobe, I guess. All right, what's next? Tutorials, tutorials. That was a win for Adobe in the past because there are so many tutorials for Adobe software. But nowadays we, we got multiple new courses, YouTubers and other creative people covering alternative software. So there are many more tutorials now for version two. So I will left this as win for both. That's super easy way to learn graphic design software with YouTube nowadays. So I will keep it as the gray color, no winner here. And the last one, that's kind of a win. <laughs> That's not really a win. That's something to keep in mind, all right? So uh, Adobe as a corporation is known for monopoly practices. So there are two ways of um, having the highest building in the city, right? You can uh, build the highest building and you can just destroy other people's buildings and you will be the highest one. And that's what they did in the past. So as you may know, they purchase and close multiple companies that produce creative software and that's maybe something that you don't want to support with your money right so for example you've been a freehand user in the past or fireworks user in the past and they purchase your company shut down your favorite product and what next now you have to switch to adobe because the bandits burn your restaurant so you must go and eat in the restaurant owned by bandits so maybe you want to just pick the alternative software because you don't want to support Adobe. That's also a reason to consider, right? All right. So today we look into 10 different things comparing Adobe Illustrator with Affinity Designer version 2. So let's summarize quickly. So Adobe Illustrator, that's a kind of history of monopoly practices. So keep that in mind. For the tutorials uh, available for both programs, no problem here. Industry standard, that's still a winner for Adobe. 
user interface it's much uh, modern in affinity designer ipad version works best for both there's no winner here 3d tool that's for adobe adobe is a winner definitely for 3d tool a price a price is on the affinity designer side that's much cheaper software all right shape building now available in both programs so no problem with that auto trace only available in adobe illustrator and pixel persona only available in affinity designer so i hope this is kind of balance overview on those two softwares in 2023 and i hope it will help you to make more educated decision on your next purchase thank you for today and i hope you will check out my tutorials for affinity designer bye